Hi, good, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for having me here. Thanks for letting me share my story. Two weeks ago, I was at, uh, at the Cape Town um, Aquarium, and I saw this quote, how, how water f- just covers everything. And it, it reminded me of how, how water changes and defines landscapes. And I saw a parallel with mobile phones and <clears throat> how they also, how mobile phones have changed the development landscape over the last um, decade. And um, six years ago, I, I spent a few weeks in, in um, Kenya. I was uh, spending some time in an orphanage. And, and what I really remember from that time there was that I saw um, pretty much everyone had a mobile phone. And it really, really struck me. And I was like, wow, what an amazing opportunity. At the time, I didn't really do much with it. Um, went back to the Netherlands. I was CTO of an internet company there. And some, some pretty big life-defining moments happened in my life and my wife's life. And we sat down and we thought, what do we really want to do? What are our dreams? What do we want to pursue? And we came to the conclusion that we really wanted to pursue living in a developing country, um, getting involved with, with less privileged people, um, hopefully being of an, an, a positive influence in their lives. So coming to this decision, we sort of took a, a leap of faith. We, we packed what we could into three suitcases um, and, and traveled to South Africa. And um, we sold everything else we had and gave it away and, and, and just decided, well, this is, this is what we'd like to do. We're going to get involved. And uh, that's what we did. And somewhere along the way, um, I got involved with the foundation I'm currently working for. And um, like I noticed in, in Kenya with mobile phones, their focus is um, using mobile phones for large-scale social impact in, in emerging uh, markets and developing countries. And on mobile phones, I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen these statistics before, but um, Every time I, re- I see these statistics, I'm amazed and, and challenged by the opportunity. Because in the developing economies, account for 80% of the world's total mobile connections. And almost four out of five new mobile connections are being made in developing countries. That's tremendous growth. And developing economies grew their subscriber base at four times the rate of developed countries. So mobile phone usage in developing countries, including Africa, is... is um, exploding, in a sense, and it, it provides us with a really, really tremendous opportunity. So now I'm spending my time building technology um, to improve the health and well-being of people living in poverty. This is, this is what I do. And Africa is over one billion people. Not everyone lives in poverty, obviously, um, but it is a big challenge on the continent. And, but there's an opportunity. We have almost 500 million phones. And at the growth we're seeing now, by 2020, everyone in Africa will be, will be able to be reached on a cell phone. And this is, like I said, it's a tremendous opportunity. However, the challenge there is 95% of these people have prepaid phones, <clears throat> which means they run out of airtime. But they have a connection. They can be reached individually. They can be targeted individually, even though they cannot reach out because of financial constraints or, or whatever other constraints they, they have. And this is, I think this is key. While they have trouble reaching out, we can reach in. And so recognizing this fact that there's this huge group of people who have a phone, and this is only going to grow more, realizing this, that they have this phone, that we can connect them, is a huge opportunity for social impact. Where previously... Um, a decade ago, for example, um, offering them health services and information services would have been a logistical nightmare just because how do you get that out there? Now we have this opportunity to use mobile phones. Um, and in the process, making these previously overlooked people in society um, that were invisible, making them visible and, um, in a sense, a- allowing them to interact with the world at large in a way that previously was not possible. So in some of our projects um, that I'm involved with, I see these trends, and um, I'd like to just share on some of these, on three of these. The first one being identity, accountability, and individual behavior change. So the question is, we have this connection into it. What do we do to bring social impact? And and I'd like to share a bit on these three points. And the challenge is, is to build systems that recognize and value the individual. and where previously they were anonymous, they are now known. They are, um, health services can be provided to them on their mobile phones. And I think a project that we're involved in that really illustrates this, this key 
element of identity is text alert, and it's really quite simple, where we connect to medical record systems of, of clinics that make ARV medicine available to people living with HIV, and based on the registered visits at the clinic, we send out reminders two weeks in advance, and a, week, and a day in advance, sorry, telling them that they are expected to come at the clinic. And if they've attended, we send them a thank you message, and if they haven't attended, we alert them to the fact that they've missed their appointment and really should get in touch. And at every stage, they have the option to send a please call me to the clinic, which is free in South Africa. Um, so if you don't have airtime, you can still contact the clinic. The clinic will call you back and, and reschedule. And I think these simple reminders serve as a greater reminder of the fact that they, as an individual, are valued, that their health is important, that they are known, and um, that their health is, is really important. And I think the, the results show where previously 30% of, of visits were, were not attended, which meant 30% of people didn't come for their medicine and as a result became terribly ill. Now, just by sending these messages that affirm their identity as an individual, the, the percentage of missed visits dropped from four, uh, between 4 and 6%. So that's, that's just an incredible change just by targeting them individually, making use of the fact that they have a phone and that they can be reached. The second item is accountability. So we have this connection to these people, and we can, we can contact them, like I said. And um, it provides a tremendous opportunity to, to build systems that nourish or, or uh, stimulate accountability. Um, using mobile phones, we can now aggregate and, and centralize data in ways that previously was not possible, providing accountability and uh, transparency on completely new levels. And I think... Uh, a project we're involved in, in in Zambia illustrates this. In Zambia, you ha have small-scale farmers who, who have um, market agents sell their goods on their behalf. And at the end of the day, the market agent says, well, I've sold so many of your tomatoes at this price, and based on that, he gets a cut. And while it's a system built on trust, which is a really, really good thing, trust is also something that's difficult to measure. So by using mobile phones, we can add an element of accountability to this um, system. And so what, what's happening now is that these market agents, instead of having to communicate with all of these individual farmers, which is costing them a fortune, they can centrally store this information. And from there on, it's broadcast to all the different farmers on what prices, how much. And it adds value to the market agent because now it's cheaper for them and they can cater to a larger audience. The bigger benefit in terms of accountability is now that f farmers using their low-end phones, really not smartphones, really your old Nokias, can query this central data store and see, okay, wait, I'm getting tomatoes for this price, but in the next market, I'm getting tomatoes for, for, for that price. And based on that, they can make better informed decisions. And it provides accountability in a system that otherwise could be quite murky. Um, the last one is behavior change. And when I'm talking here about behavior change, I'm, I'm talking about simple individual behavior change. Um, what we're seeing is that by, again, using this connection and feeding into it and making information freely accessible, we're seeing behavior change in, in, in the people and, um, we're targeting. And a good example of this is a site we were running over, a little over a year now called Young Africa Live. And um, we've had some impressive numbers. Um, we're quite happy with that. But what we really were asking ourselves is, are we having an impact? Are we making a difference in people's lives? Young Africa Live is a site about love, sex, and relationships in the time of HIV. It's an, it's an entertainment-oriented site, and it's for free available um, for people on Vodacom. So they don't need airtime, they don't need data on their phone, and they can still access it. So we write little articles and, and stimulate discussion around these topics. So we wanted to know, okay, we're getting these numbers, but are we having an impact? Are we reaching our goal of, of really having, um, changing people's lives. So we literally asked that question in the online community. We asked them, has Young Africa Live changed your life? And we, we invited them to respond. And over 700 people responded. And a lot of these were very touching, real life stories. And um, I'd like to share two of them. So one of them, one of the stories is a lady, the story of a lady. These are real life stories. We said eight months ago she um, found out she was pregnant and HIV positive. And as a, she was so distraught by this fact that she attempted to kill herself. And um, a friend of hers point, um, introduced her to Young Africa Live and said, 
have, have a look at this, and, and she started reading it, and she realized that living with HIV is not a death sentence. As a result of that realization and, and having this information accessible to them, even though they don't, she didn't have airtime, it changed her complete outlook on life. Where before there was despair, there's now hope. She's taking medicine for her and for her child, and she's living a positive, healthy life. Um, and just by um, feeding into this, um, into these people, into these invisible people using this mobile phone connection, we can see these simple behavior changes. And the last one I wanted to share is um, a story about a girl who went to visit another girlfriend together with her boyfriend. And this girl greeted this, um, uh, her, her girlfriend uh, and kissed her on the cheek and hugged her. And her boyfriend at a later stage quarreled with her and said, why did you do this? You know this girl is HIV positive. And because of Young Africa Live, this girl was now able to explain to her boyfriend what HIV positive means and, and how um, you can get infected and how you cannot get infected. And as a result of her knowing this, she intentionally reached out to this girl who is HIV positive. She, she intentionally hugged her and she intentionally kissed her because she knew she cannot get infected. And this is huge because, um, th because of the stigma surrounding HIV. Um, a lot of these people get ostracized because of the fact that they are HIV positive. And just by feeding this knowledge into this invisible people group, um, we can change behavior. Where before people were ostracized, now they are intentionally loved. And I think that is, that is really a huge achievement. So, I think what I'm trying to say is that <clears throat> all these people, this invisible people group across the African continent can be reached. We just have to think of ways, how do we reach them? How do we reach in where they are failing to reach out? Um, how do we recognize their identity as an individual using their mobile phones? How do we introduce accountability? And through that, how do we introduce simple behavior change that have a ripple effect throughout the communities, changing the communities from inside out? Um, so I'm very excited about being involved in that. I am, um, it's, it's the reason why I'm here on this continent, and it's, I think it's the reason why I'm here speaking to you now, and that's also what I want to encourage and challenge you with. Reach, how do we reach out to these people? Think about that. <laughs>